All right, folks, so this is my review of Hickory Hills Golf Club, golf course, uh, one of the two, in York, Pennsylvania. This is actually not um, in York downtown. Uh, this place is actually about, um, I don't know, about 10 miles out of York proper by the General Mills plant off of Route 30 as you go into York from the southwest. Now, this has happened on occasion, but this is the, I've noticed this on occasion that some courses will share the same name, but this is the first time I'm aware of that I've actually uh, played, of, played on or reviewed a course that has the same name as another course uh, somewhere in the country, not to mention the planet. And irony of ironies, this course shares the same name with another course called Hickory Heights, yes, uh, that's in, Pittsburgh. This is this place is just west, southwest of Pittsburgh, just as uh, the place that I played um, this weekend was southwest of York. Now the course is a slope 131 course, according to Golf Now, which usually slightly underestimates it, uh, slope 131. But in any case, it's a it's a above 130, between 130 and 135. From the blue tees which is about 6500 yards on this course and this reminds me of an old adage and i've said this a few times for in a few different videos beware of short courses with high slopes and i will say that this course definitely lives up to that adage it in my opinion it's it's a sort of an intermediate course now i've i've seen a lot of courses that are more cut you know from rough cut out of the rough somebody goes in the mountain and, and hews a course out this course is not quite as bad as some of the courses in north carolina that uh, i've commented on already uh, that i can think of certainly it but it's not far from that it's not as bad as as um you know just an old an old course that's hewn out of the woods you know somebody walked up in the woods with a saw and cut you know a fairway 18 fairways out of it or whatever it's but it's pretty close it it is a bit vertical it does have some good verticality to it not too much it does have some um tightness in terms of the fairway width to length ratio it's certainly going to be a challenge if you have trouble um hitting shots without spraying balls left and right and it's not too long. It's not like a 60, you know, six, 68 or 69 or 7,200 yard course on the back tees, but it's not really short either. A lot of the holes are in the 380, you know, like the par fours in the 380 to 400 yard range. There aren't a lot of long holes on this course. There's a, a couple of 500 yard par fives. Um, the uh, par threes tend to be 190 you know um there's a couple 190 par uh threes and there's a couple of 110 yard um par um threes and as such it has a decent amount of challenge i would say for a um intermediate golfer but it's probably a bit too much for a beginner and um there is definitely something to be said for being an intermediate golfer and managing a course like this well and before you start going out and playing really long courses and worrying about hitting three woods and and um and three irons and so forth on um, a big long course I'm trying to hit 250 275 yard drives this course is a good i think sort of tune-up for a lot of players in this in a sense that you really didn't have a lot of room out there on the course to um, spray shots. Some of the holes look like they did, but again, the tricky thing about hitting golf shots a long distance is the farther you hit them, the easier it is to hit into the woods, <laughs> okay? It does not take a lot. If you're gonna hit a ball 250 yards, you don't have to be too far offline to put a ball in the woods. And this course, while not requiring uh really long shots to play it in par you certainly could hit long shots and instead of say you know dividing a 240 yard uh hole uh into 
two shots of 120 yards each, which are nine, you know, eight, nine, maybe seven iron-ish, depending on how um, far you can hit, you could do it that way, or you can hit, you know, your 220, let's say 190 to 220 yard shots, and then try to close it with a short wedge. And that's all fine, well and good, if you don't put that first shot in the woods. So this course gives you a choice, a very simple choice. You can either try to play your mid to short irons, um, pretty much all the shots, maybe a, you know, a decent drive, you just look for 200 yards with a, a, um, a driver off the tee, not really try to beat it in a submission, or you can try to you know, abuse your length on this course and take the chance that you're gonna have to play rescue shots. Now, it's still not too hard to play rescue shots. A lot of the shots are, a lot of the fairways are open enough that you can play rescue shots back into the play. But then again, a lot of the shots are, a lot of the uh, holes are not. There's definitely some um, tight holes where if you hit to one side, it's OB or lost, you know, it's gone. Or if you hit to the other side, it's okay. So it does help to know the course a little bit, know what's OB and what's not OB, what's, what's going to be playable, you know, where you can hit, you know, into the trees and where you can't. And in that way, if you were going to skirt you know, of the line between um, sanity and chaos, you can always decide, you know, at least which side is least chaotic, let's put it that way. So I thought it was a fun course. I actually almost played the back nine again because circumstances beyond my control dictated that um, I go in, I get something to drink, and I come out and the group behind, a, behind me, which turns out to be seven old, old older players, <laughs> let's just say, older players, um, they come through, grab something really quick and go out again. And by the time I got done having my hot dog and whatever, they had beat me out to the 10th tee. So I ended up waiting for about 15 minutes for them to go through. Of course, immediately I'm right on their heels and the group behind me, this twosome, is behind me on my heels. So circumstances were favorable in this regard I was able to pass them back but I, I really kind of rushed through um, 10 through 14 let's say and I wanted to go back and play it again I mean I really enjoyed the course however having a two-hour drive in front of me and having it be uh, four o'clock in the afternoon as it were when I finished um, I decided that uh, I would not do so, but I would give it a positive um, review in that sense because I did want to go back and play it again. I mean, I have to say, it's it's not very often that I actually want to play a course again the same day. And uh, it and this was one of those courses. I I often don't find myself wanting to play a course again. Uh, that's one other problem. And I rarely have a good time playing a course when I'm pushed from behind or held up from in front. And a lot of times um, players will just uh, interfere with each other. You know, either somebody hits up from behind you or um, there's too much talking going on, you know, in front of you or something where you're trying to play and the, and the guys up ahead of you are talking or the guys behind you are talking or something. There wasn't any of this at this course. There were some, some guys actually doing some talking, um, but they were way behind me. I think, um, like on the 18th tee, there were some guys talking, but they were five holes behind me because there's a tee right there, um, which I guess is like number 14, that's also um, right there, much like Twin Lakes uh, on the Lakes course has two or three tees that are right there where they go uh, back and forth across a crevice and lake, you know, on the front side. This was a little similar in that regard. So um, it's nice when you play holes that are a little similar, but they don't have to be very similar. You know, let's put it that way. Um, in any case, I certainly enjoyed the round. I definitely enjoyed those two amber um, Samuel Adams beers that I had. Uh, it had as a, the place is a, a nice, you know, uh, fairly modest, modern enough, not modern style, but traditional style clubhouse. And it was only $40 for, 
for 18 with a cart on a Sunday morning. Uh, my tea time was uh, early that morning. Um, and I finished um, at four, as I said, because it was you know kind of held up there. And I did take a break um, in the middle. So it was a really nice day to play golf. Wasn't hot at all. I just had a great time. And it wasn't that long of a drive. It was a two hour drive for me. So um, not bad at all. But um, I just didn't want to stay there too long and stay there and play uh, that nine holes. I didn't want to actually do it, but I was seriously thinking about it. So I will give this course, I want to give this course a B star also. This is one of those courses where I feel like a B is not quite giving it enough due, but a B star, a B plus is too much credit. It's just not that good of a course. It's a good technical course that lacks a lot of spit and polish um, that other courses do have. A course that might charge seventy dollars, eighty dollars, ninety dollars uh, might have like a big, you know, big burgeoning clubhouse, huge menu, all that kind of thing. This place didn't really have any of that. It was it was decent. It was you know nice enough, but um, certainly not going to compete with you know some of the you know better courses, say um, Richmond or. Um, or um, Raspberry Falls or anything, you know, it's not that level of a course, but it's, it's not some um, hole in the wall course where the clubhouse is in a shack, <laughs> you know, in a cart shack, converted cart shack, not at all. Um, so certainly a B star course. Another thing I forgot to mention, I didn't see any houses on the course until I got, oh, way into the course, probably about the 16th hole, I think you can see through some trees, the back of a row of houses, uh, and just really not even a factor in this course. Wonderful thing, a little plane noise because I think there is an airport not too far from the course. I think it said 20 minutes from the course is, in, uh, oh, that's the, the Pittsburgh International Airport is near the course. There was only small plane traffic, um, not really a lot of road noise at all. It was a nice, it was just really nice. Also, uh, the greens were a little bit slow, not any really elevated uh, greens, but there were some drop off in some of the greens and um, decently wide fairways for the front side, but tightened up definitely on the back. Yes, that's uh, Hickory Heights Golf Course in York, Pennsylvania. A decent B-star course and a decent round. Definitely entertaining, good, challenging round, but not too uptight and definitely not a you know country club kind of place. I think they don't even require college shirts at this place.